uppercut, uppercut, sonic boom! Well, hello there, humans, hippies, earthlings, whoever you are, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, if you're lucky enough. So welcome back to Channel on Bushka, and today I'm going to be doing a video, well, the first in a three-part series. The first tank I'm going to be looking at is the Super Conqueror X. Then I'm going to have a look at the Chieftain Mark VI, and then the T110E5, the first tier 10 tank I ever owned, which is pretty cool, I think, anyway. The American Heavy Line was the first thing I ever drove on up, and it's changed tremendously, and I'm going to waffle on and talk about old times and how it was when I was a boy and I had to walk 300 miles to school wearing a barbed wire jogstripe. Anyway, onwards and upwards. This tank is, as I said, part of a three-part series, but I've only played this one so far. I mean, I've played the E5 for ages. I'm lying. I've played the E5. I already have half-formed opinions and half-baked ideas about both the Chieftain and the E5, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to stretch it into a three-part series. The Super Conqueror X is the tank I chose to run first because it's the tank I have really had the least to do with. Um, and it's the tank that interested me the most, especially in terms of armor profile, which we'll have a look at in just a wee short while. I haven't included the FV215B because it's really not the tank that I think is similar to these two, uh, the Chieftain and the Super Conqueror. Um, I think the E5 is far more in common than the other two. Anyway, I digress. Let's talk about what makes this tank so interesting. That for me, is the spaced armor either side of the turret. That's the thing that grabbed my attention. The other thing I noticed was, look, it is truly Conqueror-ish in its size. Um, if anyone has ever stood next to a Conqueror or one of these, this line of main battle tanks, um, you will understand and agree that they are truly gargantuan beasts. They are monsters. Um, not unlike the fact that people don't realize how big the tortoise is in real life, the Conqueror series of vehicles is just... Look how wide this thing is. Like, it likes big booty, and it cannot lie. Um, let's talk about this armor profile. And we will get to more about the tank, but the, the damage on the tank is great. I want to get that out of the way. Locked 4K all the time. Let's talk armor. So, I want to talk about the armor profile, first and foremost, because this is really intriguing to me. The thing that I found interesting about this tank is it actually has a strong upper glacis and it felt like I was side scraping this a little bit at times which is not chieftainy at all uh, but there were these big sections of green on the top when you're using heat now, this is the IS-4's angle here there's still very very clearly penetrable turret here when you're using all that gun depression if you're using AP like the thing is red as red can be um, and so I wanted to have a look at the x-ray section which will hide the spaced armor and stuff uh, so I could see the cheeks. Now, the cheeks, the flat out thickness of them is 225, okay? And then they're pretty steeply angled. There's a ring around the base, which is 256 millimeters. Interesting, um, for me anyway, I find this kind of stuff interesting. The very weak top of the turret is there and it means, look, you, you have to play this tank like this. You have to play it on an incline. It's, it's Anyone that's a tall tank is going to struggle, uh, is going to be able to look down at you and pen this, very comfortably pen this top area. But then you add in the spaced armor and you can see why it becomes a little bit confusing. This spaced armor here, and we're going to hide the primary armor now. Um, the spaced armor, you've got a 20 millimeter shield either side, the cheeks. Now this is really effective at getting rid of heat uh, heat doesn't like spaced armor. You can see there's a big gap between the cheeks and the actual turret armor itself. So depending on who you're fighting, it makes a big difference. If you're fighting a, we'll go back to the pen thing here, and I'll, I'll show you what I mean. If you're fighting an IS-4 and he uses heat, well, then he can pen you around the gun mantlet, which is about 300 millimeters required there, that's fine. But he's not penning anything through this spaced armor. Okay, so if you're up like this, he's going to shoot either side of the gun, which is a possible shot, but not likely. Whereas if you're fighting against a Chieftain Mark VI, for instance, who has high pen APCR, he's more likely, you can see some of the sides of that tank there become penable because APCR doesn't struggle the same way heat does against spaced armor. So the armor profile is interesting. The... Soft stats, the stats 
that make up the tank itself are really interesting for me because it's a British super weight. Uh, it's a monstrously big tank, very large, very, very British. And yet the stats are nearly identical to the T-1185. Well, the, a lot of the stats anyway, like the gun handling, the um, not so much the gun handling, but the, the DPM, uh, the alpha, the penetration values, the gun depression, they're all exactly the same as a T1185. In fact, the thing about the Super Conqueror Rex that really makes it stand out is quite simply that armor profile. The turret's very different in the way it's strong than most of the turrets that you're gonna find on hull down heavies. What does it do? Well, it finds spots like this. It finds, oh God, that's a bad shot. That was all me. That was definitely not the tank. It finds spots like this and it exploits the gun depression. It turns it into something that uh, is absolutely glorious once you find the spot for it. It's different to the other two in another way as well. And that's the thickness of the side armor. You can get a lot of bounces off the side of this tank. And I was surprised by that. Um, it's got kind of spaced armor, a relatively thick bit of armor on the side. I'm not talking like E100 uh, levels of side armor at all, but better than a T125, that's for sure. And I will drive those other tanks, don't get me wrong. I'm gonna give them a run, and I'm gonna give them a run probably today. I'm going away on holidays for a little bit, so it could be a slow week at the office for you guys. There's not gonna be a heap of content. We did a live stream yesterday and we will certainly be doing more, but there's a lot of changes going on on the channel. I don't know how I'm gonna monetize it. I used to have about 300 odd patrons on this channel and I used to do a lot of patron streams and I, I honestly feel like that burnt me out a little bit uh, when I went and tried to do two channels with two different sets of patrons, doing patron streams on both channels. And it, it just, I don't know what I'm gonna do and how we're gonna move forward with YouTube, with memberships, what we're gonna do monetizing the channel. But anyway, let's move on with the Super Conqueror tank. As long as you know that there are changes blowing in the wind, AKA Bob Dylan style. Its dispersion isn't as good as the other two tanks that we're talking about here, but it still hits a lot of these crazy shots, um, as in hatch shots, because, well, I don't really know. I don't know whether I've been lucky, uh, because I feel like it's paying for that armor with a, little bit more dispersion. The gun is 0.353, so it's not particularly amazing dispersion-wise. But what I've done is I'm running it with the accuracy module, the refined gun, rather than the aim time. The thinking behind this is just a lot of the times I'm running it, I've got to really make sure that I'm hitting that hat shot when I'm in a hull down battle with someone. And while that's wonderful to have better aim time, it's also really, really good to hit very, very small targets because that's exactly what the hatches are on the tanks that you're fighting. They're very, very small targets. And if you're fighting a T110E5, there's very little. Like that IS-7 there. I just find that the dispersion is better to have than the aim time. Now, it changes on tank to tank, but on the Super Conqueror, that's what I felt. Anyway, it's not fast. It is... It is it's a very odd blend. It's... Not fast, it's massive, it's chunky, it's got this funny old turret. And like if you've played the Conqueror at tier nine, it's a little bit different again, because the thing that I, and I have played a lot of Conqueror back in the day, back before it became uh, de rigueur to play a Super Conqueror. And its gun is what makes it crazy. It's 0.299 dispersion, and you can get it down to 0.269 with the refined gun, which is, a really accurate gun that is better than either the Chieftain, the E5, or the Super Conqueror. But it's the same massive rig that the Super Conqueror Rex is. So all in all, this becomes a tank that is very much in the eye of the beholder. And aesthetically speaking, the tank does look superb. It has access to the same kind of uh, cool uh, 105 millimeter Hesh round or 110 millimeter a pen Hesh round that you get on a lot of the British tanks. Chieftain has that as well. The E5 doesn't get that. And that Hesh round has a 515 alpha damage. Now that is something that you can definitely abuse on other tanks like the 
uh, waffle tractor and the grill and, and those kind of tanks. And the rear of, obviously, American tanks, which is always poorly armoured. It has good DPM at nearly 3,000 DPM on a heavy. And back in the day, nothing like that existed. Like, heavies just didn't have the kind of DPM that you're looking at there. They've, they've been a lot of changes to the way the game is played. I like it better on a corner than I do the E5 or the Chieftain. Um, I feel like you can get more bounces off that upper glacis, so you don't have to be as hull down as those tanks. Your lower glacis is obviously bloody enormous. It looks lovely, doesn't it? Like, it's a good-looking tank. I know that Armor Inspector shows the turret to have that big weak point on top, but it's very hard to find situations where you are looking down at the top of that turret, unless you're fighting a Super Conqueror that really doesn't know the positives and the negatives of their own vehicle and react accordingly. A lot of people might disagree with my idea of running the refined gun as well because its aim time is quite large. It's got a big bloom on it. That's fair enough. Um, everyone is each to their own. And I'm lucky enough in this game to be running with my good mate Rich Raff, a uh, long-time member of the Grump Clan, Surly, whatever you want to call it. If you're looking back for the annals and the history of tanking uh, on the Asia server, we feature. Um, and Richie's running the IS-4 and he just held the line there for me, which is the perfect partner for a tank like the Super Because what you're really looking for is a tank that can hold and hover while you just pump the crap out of them with a 400 alpha gun with a lot of nice bend and a good DPM. I mean, I I love the IS-4 anyway. There's some, eh, it's not an IS-4 review. I won't get too far into it. I hope you enjoyed this. It's, it's an interesting tank. It's an expensive tank to get a hold of when it's available. So in that respect, the E5 is always gonna be a clear winner over the Chieftain and the Super Conqueror Rex. But for all that, if you're looking at them just bare bones, there are more differences than you'd expect at a hull down tanks. They do a lot of the same things, but they do them in a very, very different fashion. And I'm very interested in, and excited to drive the Chieftain and see where it's at these days, because I haven't driven it for a, a long while. God, that's an awful paint job. I'm Bushka. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for being part of the resurgent Bushka on Blitz YouTube channel. I'm really enjoying my tanking now, much more than I have for a very long time. I've always loved it, but uh, just having the time to take a bit of tanking is where it's at for me. Uh, until next time, stay safe on the battlefield. Bye for now.